Hello, welcome back. Today we have a new worksheet and the name of our worksheet is called Bugs Tally. And one of the things that we have to learn to be able to do is to organize data. And data is just a big word for information. And information can be in the form of numbers or it can be in pictures or it can be words, but we're gonna have to organize some information here. And the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna be using tally marks to help us keep track of things. So let's talk about tally marks real quick and we can kind of see it up here in this little box. But tally marks are basically just a little tally or a little mark like this to represent a number. So this is how many? It's one, right? And it says it right over there. We've got one tally mark, two little marks equals two, one, two, three equals three, one, two, three, four equals four. But then when we start to get a whole bunch, they decided that we'll keep track of them on number five. We're going to do this. We'll have one, two, three, four, but on the fifth one, we'll cross it across here and that will help us to kind of keep track that there are five total. Okay. So when you have a lot of numbers, we can see this really fast is going to be five. Kind of like when you count by fives, how it's easy to count by fives, five, 10, 15, 20, and you get a bunch of numbers really fast. This is kind of like counting by fives, but it's keeping track of it with something called tally marks. So let's look at our worksheet and the directions say, check the correct number of bugs you see. So what I see here is I see some snails. Let's count the snails. We've got one, Two, let's find the correct tally marks that represent this. Do you see which one it is? This is one, two, and this is one, two, three. So the correct answer is two, right? Because we have one, two snails. That was pretty easy. Let's go on to the next one. The next one looks like we've got some kind of flies here, maybe some fireflies. Let's count to see how many there are. There are one, two, three, four, five. How did I tell you we were going to do five? Do you remember? You see that line that goes across, right? And they showed it right here. So we can already see that this is going to be five. We don't even have to count them because when the line goes across, it keeps track of our fives like that. So I already know that that is five. So I'm going to put our check right here. Now we got some bigger numbers. So let's count the next one. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six butterflies. So what I need is a five like this plus one because one is one more than, one would be one more than five here. So I've got five, six. So let's see if we see that down here. We've got five, six, seven or five, six. And what do we say it was? It's six, right? So we need to put a check right here for six butterflies. Now we've got ladybugs. We got a lot of ladybugs here. Are you gonna count with me? Here we go. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So if we're making tally marks, we need to have two groups of five plus three, okay? So let's see where we see this here. We've got two groups of five, so that's 10 plus one, two, three. I think that's the right answer. What's this one down here? This is three groups of five, so five, 10, 15, 16. Well, that's too many, right? We only needed 13, so this is our correct answer here, okay? Ooh, we got mosquitoes now. I don't like mosquitoes. Let's count and see how many mosquitoes there are. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So 10 is going to be how many groups of five? Do you remember? Five, 10. So there's two groups of five. So let's see if we can find that. We've got one group of five and two group of five. So this is 10 and this is one group of five, one group of five. So there's two groups of five, which is 10 plus one is 11. How many mosquitoes do we say there are? 10 awful mosquitoes, right? So we need a check right here. We're almost done. We've got one more. Oh my gosh, we've got so many bumblebees to count. Are you ready? Here we go. Count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. I'm gonna write this over so I don't forget it off to the side. I've got twenty Bs, okay? How many groups of five is that? I want you to think about that. If you have twenty, let's count by fives and see if we can get to twenty. Five. 10, 15, 
20. So that is how many? One, two, three, four. That is four groups of five. So let's see if we see this down here. Let's go down to our answers. We've got one, two, three groups of five, five, 10, 15. Nope, that's not enough. And the other group is one, two, three, four. Let's count. 5, 10, 15, 20, there it is. That's what we needed. We had four groups of five right here. So that's how we keep track of data or information or numbers, or in this case, our bugs, with tally marks. Tally marks is another way to help us to visually and quickly see groups of five, and then we can count by fives and then add on. So great job today working with your tally marks. I'll see you guys again next time. Bye-bye, friends. Hello, welcome back. Today we have a new worksheet and our worksheet is called Zoo Tally Chart, but I wanna to talk to you first about why we're doing this. We're using a system called Tally Marks. And the reason that we're doing that is it is a way to help us organize data or information that we're given. And information can be numbers, it can be objects, it can be people, it can be ideas. There's all kinds of things that we could have to organize. In this case, today, we're gonna to be organizing information about our animals over here. But I wanna to talk to you about tally marks. So I want you to look over here at the whiteboard. I'm gonna write tally marks on the board. But I wanna really explain why we have tally marks and how it helps us to organize information. So let's say that you have, let's say you have 11 objects or 11 elephants or 11 whatever. You can imagine what it is, but we have 11 of something. Now there's a couple of ways of writing it out. You can write it out numerically, which means you can write it out like this. You could write out the number 11, okay? And another way to keep track of things is with tally marks, okay? And these are what tally marks are. Basically they are marks that tell us how many of each object there are. So for example, if I were to have 11 objects, I could go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Now, if I were just to glance at this and I didn't know it was 11, I would have to go through and count each one of these little marks to know it was 11. And that might be fine with 11, but what happens if it's 110, oh my goodness, then we've got a lot, don't we? And we'd have to go through and we'd have to count all of those. But tally marks are actually a better way of writing out a number instead of making all these little teeny tiny marks that we have to count each time we look at a number, they've made a special way to do it where by fives they organize the number. So for example, instead of writing 11 like this, you can write it like this, one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So now our fives, just these two right here, are squished together. So we can automatically see that these are fives. So we can go five, ten, and then add one to it, which is eleven, like this. So this is the way that we use tally marks. This is tally marks, not like this, but like this, where we have them divided into little groups of five and then we add more onto it if we have bigger numbers. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna look at our directions and we're gonna use the tally marks to help us figure out the answer. So it says count and tally the animals, check the correct total. So down here it says giraffes and it wants to know how many giraffes there are and we've got several choices for tally marks here. So we need to first, we need to count how many giraffes there are so I want you to count with me. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And actually that just happens to be the number that I did for the example. So 11 looks like this. It's got five, 10, and then one more. So let's see if we can find it. We've got five, 10, 11. This is it, but let's see our other options. We've got five plus one is six, or five, six, seven, eight, nine. So our answer is 11. So we're gonna put a check right here next to these tally marks. The next one is elephants. Let's count the elephants. How many elephants are there? One, two, three, four, five, six. We've got six elephants. So six would be a group of five plus one. So we've got, here's five. Well, that's not the right answer. Here's five, six, seven, eight. That's not the right answer. Here's five plus one is six. So here's our right answer. That is our correct tally marks. And then down at the bottom, it's asking for monkeys. How many monkeys are there? Well, let's count the monkeys. Here we go. Count with me. One, 
two, three, four, five, skip over here, six, seven, eight. We have eight monkeys, which means we have one group of five plus five, six, seven, eight. So we have three, okay? So let's come down here. We've got five, six, seven, eight. There it is. That's the answer. But let's check and see if there's a better answer. We've got five, ten, or we've got five, six. Nope, it's going to be eight. So I'm going to put the check right down here. Eight monkeys. Great job today with your tally marks. I know that's kind of a new and different way of organizing information, but it really helps. Visually, when we see those fives, we know right away that that's a group of five, and that's a great way to organize your numbers. Great job today. I'll see you guys again next time. Bye-bye. Hello, welcome back. Nice to see you again. Today what we're gonna be doing is we are going to be looking at a worksheet and the name of our worksheet is called Birdie Graph Matching. And what we're gonna be doing in this worksheet is we're going to be looking at data or information in the form of a graph. And it's like a chart that gives us some information with numbers here. And the things that we're gonna be looking at are actually birds. We've got roosters, chickens, and chicks. And the directions say, which of the pictures is represented in the graph? Check the correct answer. So what we have to figure out first is what the graph says, and then we have to decide between each of these two pictures what graph matches the information given in the pictures, okay? So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna read our graph. So let's take a look at it over here. We've got roosters. How many roosters does this graph tell us there should be? Well, our bar graph goes all the way up to the number five. So actually right here next to roosters, I'm gonna write five. And then chickens, our bar graph goes all the way up to the number seven. So I'm gonna write seven right here. And then our chicks, our bar graph goes all the way up to the number nine. So before we did anything, we have to read our graph and figure out what our graph is trying to tell us, okay? So five roosters, seven chickens, and nine chicks or baby chickens, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at these two pictures and decide which one of these gives us this information. So we've gotta count a lot of birds here, don't we? Okay, so let's start first with this picture here on the left. And this picture says that there are, or it should match five roosters. If that's not right though, then we're gonna go to this one and see if this one's correct. So we're gonna start here first. Hopefully we have five roosters. Let's count the roosters. Those are these ones right here with these big tails. So let's start here. We've got one, two, three, four, five. So this right here, I'm gonna write it off to the side, says that there are five roosters. Now that might seem right, but we have to check both of these. We have to check all of these roosters, chickens, and chicks, and also count this one to make sure that we have the right answer. So the next thing we're looking for is chickens, okay? So I'm gonna write this out to the side, chickens, okay? And how many chicks are there? We hope that there are seven, so let's count the chickens. Those are these ones right here. Let's count them. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That looks like it's matching so far. So hopefully this is the right answer, but we'll need to check this one too to make sure. The next one is chicks. And I'm sure you probably know chicks are baby chickens, so they're the little ones, right? So let's count the chicks. Hopefully, hopefully we have nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That matches the information that was given to us in our bar graph, doesn't it? So this looks like this is gonna be the answer, but I always like to go back and make sure in case that I get the same answer over here, I might need to double check my answer. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna check these. Let's see how many roosters are in this chart over here. Let's count them. The roosters, remember, are the ones with the pretty tails. Here we go, we've got one, two, three roosters. Okay, so I'm gonna write that off to the side. For chickens, we need seven chickens. Let's count the chickens. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Oop, that one didn't match, did it? So it's looking like this one isn't gonna be the right answer, but let's check the chicks really quickly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. 
So that actually was too many chicks, right? So which one of these two matches the numbers or the information that was given to us in our bar graph? Which one do you think it is? We already decided, right, that it was gonna be this one. So I'm gonna put a check right here because this is the correct answer. This is the picture that is represented by this bar graph. So great job today. I love how you were working hard to take that data or information and interpret the graph to find the correct answer. See you again next time. Bye-bye. Hello everyone, it's Mike here again, and today we're going to be looking at bar graphs. Bar graphs are a really awesome way to see information very, very clearly. Bar graphs are super helpful to compare two different things to one another and to also get some information about one single thing. In today's bar graph, we're going to be looking at aliens and how tall the aliens are. Bar graphs are going to make seeing this information quite easy. So let's take a look and get started on alien math bar graphs. Meet the funny aliens. Use the graph to help you answer the following questions. Check the correct answer. The first thing I like to do when I see a bar graph is kind of just take a look at it and notice some things. So the first thing I notice, of course, are the aliens' names on the bottom and the really cool aliens that go along with them on top. The aliens' names are Paul, Sally, Zach, and Omar. On the left side of the graph, I see their height in inches. This is going to tell me how tall each alien is on their own. Because each alien has their own bar, I can see how tall each alien is, and then I can even compare the alien's heights just by using my eyes. Let's get started with the first question. The first question asks us, which of the aliens is the shortest? Well, I also noticed that the height starts at 57 and ends at 62. So the shortest alien is going to be the one with the smallest graph that's closest to 57. Let's take a look at each alien and see. Our first alien, Paul, is at exactly 61 inches tall. Already just by looking, I can tell he is not the shortest alien. Our next blue alien, Sally, is 59 inches tall. She is shorter than Paul, but are there any shorter aliens? Our third alien, Zach, is a whopping 62 inches tall. So far, he is the tallest, which means he is not the shortest. And finally, we have our pink alien, Omar. And Omar is only 58 inches tall. And just by looking at the graph, you can easily tell that Omar is our shortest alien at 58 inches. Let's check the box for Omar. Our next question asks, which of the aliens is the tallest? Well, let's use that same strategy again. If we look at Paul, we can remind ourselves that Paul is 61 inches tall. Maybe he's the tallest, because Sally is only 59 inches tall, which means Paul is taller. But Zach is all the way at the top of the graph at 62 inches. Do you think Zach is the tallest? Well, when you look at Omar, you remember that he is only 58 inches tall. So just by looking at these graphs, you can clearly see that Zach, our green alien, is the tallest. Let's put a check in Zach's box. Question number three asks us to focus on Zach. So let's focus on Zach. Zach is our green alien right here. And the question wants to know, how tall is Zach in inches? So to find out how tall Zach is in inches, we can look at our bar, take it all the way to the top, and see what line it perfectly matches up with. And we can see that Zach is exactly 62 inches tall. Let's put a check in Zach's box. Our final question asks us to compare two different aliens. It wants us to compare Paul and Sally. And the question says, how many inches taller is Paul than Sally. I'm going to show you two different ways to answer this question. I hope they're both really easy for you. First, let's look at Paul and see how tall Paul is. Paul 
is exactly 61 inches tall. So I'm gonna write that down just to remind myself. Paul, 61 inches tall. Sally, on the other hand, is 59 inches tall. So I'm gonna write that down again to remind myself. So we can tell that Paul is taller than Sally. But the question asks, how much taller? Let's take a closer look. The first strategy I'd like to look at is just counting up on the graph. So if we count it up from 59 to 60 and 61, we could see that there's one, two inches difference between Sally and Paul. Using this strategy, I can see that Sally is two inches shorter, meaning that Paul is two inches taller. I can also draw a number line, starting from 59, which is Sally's height, write the numbers in order until we reach Paul's height. So we'd write 59, 60, 61. We have Paul's height at 61. And then we can just make jumps until we reach the number. And we'll see how many jumps it takes to reach to Paul. So from 59 to 60, that's one. From 60 to 61, that's another one. So I can see there's two jumps, which equals two inches. But just to prove it even further, we can add the one jump plus the other one jump. And we know that one plus one equals two. So Paul is two inches taller than Sally. Great job, everybody. And I hope to see you next time. Goodbye. Hello, welcome back. Today what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking a look at a worksheet and the name of our worksheet is called Jane's Pencil Case. And we've got Jane here and here's her pencil case that she keeps all of her things in. What we're gonna do is we're gonna first look at the directions. The directions say, look at the bar graph of things in Jane's pencil case and answer the questions. Check the right answers. So this is a bar graph. A bar graph is a graph that represents information. So let's look at both sides of this graph here. The first side has some numbers, starting one, going all the way up to seven. This side down here has different categories, and the categories are pens, pencils, erasers, and rulers. So these are the things that are in Jane's pencil case, and these bars go up to different numbers, like pins goes up to six, pencils go all the way up to seven. So each one of these represents a different number, and that tells us how many things are in her case. So let's look at the questions here and let's answer our questions. Number one says, how many pins are there in the pencil case? So let's go to our graph. The question is asking, and I'm actually gonna circle this. Sometimes I like to do this. I like to circle so I know exactly what I'm looking for. So how many pins are there in the pencil case? So we're gonna go up in our graph and we're gonna find pins, and that's this first one right here. And we're gonna count how many there are in her pencil case. Our bar graph, shows us that it goes all the way up here. So let's count, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. It goes all the way up right here to six. So there are six pins in her pencil case. So we're gonna check the correct answer right here. So I'm gonna put a check next to the number six, okay? Number two says, how many erasers are there? I'm gonna underline that and then I'm gonna go up and find erasers. I've got pins, pencils, erasers, there it is. So there's erasers. How many erasers are there? Well, let's look. It goes all the way up to here. We don't even have to count them. We're gonna go all the way across and we're gonna measure. Where does that go to? It goes to the number three, right? So we've got three erasers. So I'm gonna put a check right here next to the number three, okay? The next one says, how many pencils are there in the case? I'm gonna underline that. How many pencils? Let's go up, let's find our pencils. Pens, pencils, there it is. So it says how many pencils are in the case? And we're not gonna count them, we're just gonna look at our bar graph. Where does the top of this bar go up to? It goes all the way up to the number seven, right? So that's our correct answer. So we're gonna come down here, we've got 10, nine, there it is, seven, right here, okay? How many pens and pencils are there 
together. Now this one's kind of tricky because we're looking for pens and we're looking for pencils. And then when it says how many are there together, what does that mean that we need to do with those two numbers? Do we need to add them or do we need to subtract them? We need to add them, right? When you say how many are there together, the word together is kind of a clue word to let us know that we need to add. So let's first, let's write over to the side on the board here, how many pins are there? And we already found the answer, but the answer for pins is there's six. So we're gonna take six and then we're gonna add how many pencils are there? How many pencils did we say there are? There are seven, right? So we're gonna add these together. Now, if you already know how to add them, you already know what the answer is, or we can do something else. We can draw a picture, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna count on to six, but I'm gonna draw seven items here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I want you to count with me. We're gonna count on to six. So six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So our answer is going to be 13. So let's come down here and find that answer. And there it is, it's the first one, isn't it? 13 all together, okay? And then we're gonna go to our last one. You're doing such a great job of reading that data in our graph and answering our questions. Number five says, how many things are there in all in Jane's pencil case, okay? So what exactly is that question asking? Let's read it again. How many things are there in all in Jane's pencil case? Well, how many are there in all? What is that asking us to do? Think about it. In all, all of them means that we have to do what? We have to add all of these numbers of the items in her pencil case, okay? Let's just write out each one of these. So how many pens are there? I'm gonna keep organized. I'm gonna write pens, and then I'm gonna add pens. Okay, and then I'm gonna add pencils. How many pencils are there? There's seven pencils. And I wanna write pencils underneath, so I know that I've done that one. Pencils plus erasers. How many erasers? There are three erasers. I'm gonna write erasers. And then plus our rulers. How many rulers are there? There's just one ruler, right? So we're gonna add all of these numbers together, okay? So this is what we're gonna do. The pens plus pencils, the six plus seven, we know that that is 13, right? So we're gonna add on to 13, we're gonna add three plus four. So I'm gonna write this over to the side. 13, which is our six plus our seven, plus three plus one, okay? And I'm gonna write it this way so we can add it all up. So three plus three is six, plus one is seven, okay? And then I'm gonna take the one and I'm gonna bring it down, which gives me this answer. This is how many things there are in all in Jane's pencil case. So what is the answer? The answer is 17. So let's find that down here and put a check next to the number 17. Great job. This is really difficult to do because there's a lot of things that you had to think about. You had to figure out how many things there were in the chart and what the chart meant, what it was talking about, and then you had to answer all of these questions. And on four and five, we had to add them up and do something with that information. That was a lot of really hard work today, but you guys did an amazing job. I will see you guys again next time. Bye-bye. Hello boys and girls, it's Teacher Michael, and today we're going to be looking at picture graphs. A picture graph is another really great way to display information. Today we're going to be using our picture graph to help us answer some questions. Let's take a closer look at this picture graph before we dive into these questions. In our picture graph today, it's about coffee. So I see these numbers on the bottom. These numbers on the bottom represent one cup of coffee. So one represents one, two represents two, so on and so forth. On the left side of our graph, we have each days. So on day one, can you tell how many cups of coffee we drank? Well, that's easy. We'll just have to look at day one and then count the cups of coffee on day one. So we see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I could have also just looked at the very last cup of coffee and looked down and saw what number it is. 
And you'll see that the last cup of coffee lines up with the number seven. So I know that on the first day, they drank or had seven cups of coffee. Let's use this information about reading picture graphs to help us answer the questions. Let's read the directions and get started right away. Coffee house survey. Picture graph word problems. Look at the picture graph and answer the questions about the coffee house. Okay, let's look at the first question. On which day were the most cups of coffee sold? Okay, so again, we have day one, two, three, and four. So let's look. On day one, I remember we said there were seven cups sold. On day two, there was more. There were nine cups sold. We can trace that to nine. On day three, there was even more. There were 10 cups sold. But on day four, there was the most. On day four, there was 11 cups sold. So we can know, we notice that if we look horizontally across day four, it's all the way filled up, meaning that they drank all 11 cups of coffee. So let's go ahead and check day four. Let's read the second question. On which day were 10 cups of coffee sold? Okay, there's a few different ways we can answer this question. We can go day by day, or we can look at the number of cups of coffee and look straight up. Let's look at the number of cups of coffee because that's what the question is asking you about. So it wants to know on which day were 10 cups sold. So let's underline the number 10 and look up. Which day stops at 10? Well, if we look straight across, we'll see that day three stops right at 10. So we know that on day three, there were 10 cups of coffee sold. So let's go ahead and check day three. Okay. Now, we're going to get into some questions where we have to look at more than one day at a time. We'll have to keep track of some information, so let's read this question really carefully. How many more cups of coffee were sold on the second day than the first day? Okay, so first we need to figure out what is this question really asking. It wants to know how many more cups were sold on the second day than the first day. So, let's see. How many cups of coffee were sold on day two? On day two, there were nine cups of coffee sold. What about day one? How many cups of coffee were sold on day one? Well, if we look at day one, and we remember from our example, I know there were seven cups of coffee sold on day one. So the question wants to know how many more cups of coffee were sold on that second day? Well, to figure out how many more we're gonna to have to subtract. We can subtract seven away from nine. So let's go ahead and count up from seven. Seven, eight, nine. So there were two more cups of coffee sold on the second day than the first day. Let's go ahead and check two. We could have also used visuals. If we look at day two, it goes up to nine, and day one only goes up to seven. We can see that there is a difference of two cups of coffee, or there are two blank spaces. So you can use visuals or you can use subtraction. Let's take a look at our final question. How many cups of coffee were sold on day one and day three all together? Okay, so when I say that word all together, I think we're gonna be adding and combining these numbers. So we wanna know how many cups were sold on day one and day three. So let's take a look at day one. I remember on day one and from looking at our graph, there are seven cups sold on day one. And on day three, if we look at our graph, we can see that there are 10 cups sold on day three. So to find out how many cups there were all together, we can add 10 plus seven. We'll have to make sure our seven is in the ones place lined up with the zero of the 10. Zero plus seven is seven, and one plus nothing is one. So on day one and day three all together, there were 17 cups of coffee sold. Let's go ahead and check the number 17. Remember, boys and girls, when you're looking at picture graphs or trying to answer questions about picture graphs, first, take a look at the picture graph and see what you notice. Then, after you reread each question carefully, go back and look at the picture graph to see if you can find the answer. Thanks for watching, boys and girls, and we'll see you next time. Subscribe to our channel to stay updated on new videos. Find links to our apps in the comments below.